Hello and welcome to another drive-in double feature. I'm Ryan. I'm Nathan. And this is the podcast where we talk about two movies a week every Tuesday and Thursday. But before I get into anything, we have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash drive-in double feature podcast. Just some adequate conversations where we have an adequate time and, you know, to have some adequate Mm -hmm. um, levels of enjoyment over there. You know, it's people say it's it's pretty adequate and you know for five dollars a month you can have some adequate time over there Mm -hmm. but if you want to continue to have an adequate time for free you can have that here too right well well well, no it's not adequate here Mm. it's all 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 business all straight to the bottom line imagine like a boardroom meeting that's what these ones are like (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. you're you're just like you're at attention the whole time (laughs) (laughs) yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway uh it's only for five dollars a month doesn't affect any of the content over here at all and today we're going to be talking about 1965's the 10th victim and that is directed by elio petri and uh nathan this is our very first like most kino movie we've talked about in a long long time uh, uh yes marcello yes. maestro maestroani <laughs> yeah i think that's that marcello maestroani <laughs> i don't there know there you go uh, or as i like to call him uh and marcello in this movie which is you know such a stretch in character names <laughs> yeah i know I, I don't know how actors can handle being called by different names in different movies <laughs> Yeah, I think every actor should be called by their first name. That should be their character name in every movie. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> I think like I noticed uh, this is an off, but Bill Paxton has like characters named Bill in like many of his movies. <laughs> and I wonder if that was like a choice from him. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Well, it's like uh, Tony Danza. If you look at his film, it's like it's Tony. Tony. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but yes, this movie is... Uh, it's a dystopia future type setting um, where it's legal to kill people. What did the purge just steal from this no movie? Way. No way. I really hope that it not, it's not only <laughs> the purge, but other things didn't steal from this. No, never. I don't mm-hmm. think they would ever do that, but uh, <laughs> this movie is set in the future. Probably uh So far in the future, at least, that we can't compare it. But, you know, everyone still looks like they're straight out of the 60s. And 2079, it's the aftermath of World War III in this movie. And the big uh, push in this movie is that, yes, it is legal to kill anybody because they (laughs) they want to curb people's violent tendencies by letting people commit, uh, uh, contend in the big hunt which is basically somebody is marked as a hunter one person's marked as a victim and whoever kills the other one first they win and if you kill if you win the game 10 times you win a million dollars yeah but it's like really it feels rigged right because like you have to be a hunter and a victim or sorry a hunter yeah hunter and victim yeah you have to be yeah. you have to be a hunter five times you have to be a victim five times yeah but the victim doesn't know who's going to try to kill them and is completely in the dark hunter they get to know about this person's schedule who they are everything about them and it seems like it's so stacked in the hunter's favor well and like we come to find out like the the person that's doing this uh, like they have like a whole team like, <laughs> yeah cuz they can afford it yeah well, yeah. So that's like you get like money every time you kill somebody in mm-hmm. this movie in, in this world. And uh, the main hunter of this movie, um, they have like their own team. Like, okay, well, he's doing this at this time. You should go. This would probably be an ideal time to mm-hmm. go do this. And uh, anyway, uh, the the two main characters in this movie, like I said, are uh, <laughs> Caroline Meredith. Uh, yeah very american right yeah very american sounding name at all and uh but it's played by ursula andres you know of course from dr no fame Mm -hmm. um she has a great intro where you know she's (laughs) she's like uh doing like you you see like an asian man walking into like this really 
freaky looking like club where it's like got like these swirl black and white swirls all over the walls mm-hmm. and mirror balls and you'd see like this sexy blonde woman doing a dance like in a bikini like a mm-hmm. silver bikini and like and they're like oh what's what's going on here and then all of a sudden like just guns come out of her bra and he just shoots them like dead out on the spot like that which is literally uh was taken and put into austin powers well that's that's like the thing about austin powers was influenced a lot by this movie by michael Mar- mike myers which is so wild because it's not even like a james bond style movie i mean it's very very 60s that's that's like probably the biggest part of it yeah, and that's probably one of my favorite parts about this movie is that just the setting of it and just like mm-hmm. the design and look of so many of the things in this movie. It's just like nobody has like a typical outfit. It's like No, yeah, it's so it, it, like out there. Yeah, like even like even Kara Aaron, even uh Aunt Ursula, she has uh like this one dress she wears a lot where it's like this it's like this pink sweater, but it's like that only has like a front half. Yeah, there's kind no of. back to it, and it look it looks so uncomfortable. I'm watching her, and it's like falling off of her. Like it that looks like the worst thing to wear. Yeah, and there's other female characters that have like like these like mini dresses on, but they have like mm-hmm. these bands attached, or it's so they look like mm-hmm. that character. Uh, I can't think of her name, but they look like Mila Jovovich in like the fifth element. Yeah, where it's like <laughs> like it kind of just barely stretched over them, right? But they also yeah. like wear like the that white helmet with like with the black visor on it. It's so hard to describe. The costuming is crazy. Just the the production design to this one is is amazing. Yeah, but uh, they 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 have her little introduction, and then uh, Marcelo he has his introduction where it's revealed that. He is also he was also a hunter and he just killed his uh, sixth victim mm-hmm. and uh, Ursula she had just killed her ninth victim so she's right on the cusp of uh, finally getting her tenth yeah which I guess only fifteen people have ever done so it's like it's like a big deal that this is going on um, yeah oh and and Marcelo here he's rocking beach blonde hair or bleached blonde hair. And, yeah he's looking good he's looking yeah. he's looking <laughs> yeah yeah he's looking good i like i like the look i like the look um but uh, I, I wouldn't i wouldn't give him an eight and a half i'd give him a 10 out of 10 <laughs> <laughs> i like that that was a good one <laughs> good job <laughs> uh but i one thing i love about this universe is like it, it plays on the whole in the future we're gonna be like dumb kind of like trope because like I guess the one thing they for the victim is they have to take away all of their stuff. And uh, Mar- Marcelo ends up being a victim in the next round. And is like, um, they're taking away his comic books and they're like, oh, and his wife is like, or his girlfriend? It's, his, was, it's his mistress, yeah. His mistress, yeah, is like, oh, the classics. What are we going to do without the classics? And they're just like <laughs> Tom and Jerry comics. And, stuff. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I have a the, a flash from the golden age. You know, that's one of my favorite classics. Just, just silly stuff. Yeah, super weird stuff. <laughs> that's so <laughs> yeah, funny. It, it's um, such a, like, yeah, it's a movie that like just does weird stuff. It's just very open to just being goofy. Well, yeah, like, and there's like this weird dynamic too between uh, Marcelo and his mistress because, like, that's like the whole deal. Like, the, one of the reasons he doesn't have any money at all too is that uh, he had to pay his his ex wife a ton of money in the in the settlement, and uh, uh, his uh, mistress is also like <laughs> has like really expensive tastes and like. Mm-hmm. You know, constantly wanting to buy furniture and art deco type of pieces, and and he does not seem like he's in love with this woman at all, and like no. so much so much so that I guess like his marriage was annulled like a really long time ago, and he mm-hmm. hasn't told his mistress yet because he's <laughs> he does not want to marry this girl at all, and she like even says stuff like. Oh, I had a dream the other day that your marriage was annulled and we got married. He's just like, yeah, 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 whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that's a, his character is very like nonchalant. That's like his whole deal is like he's super chill, 
He, you know, he kind of waves everybody off and he doesn't really care. And I guess that's how he's made it as far as he has as a victim is because um, he can just walk around and he just doesn't care. Like he just found out he's the victim and he's just walking down the street, could care less that he could die in the middle of the street. Yeah. And that's like one funny thing, too, with the movie is like uh, the hunt is played up like a big deal to the point where it's almost like commercial now. Yes. And, yeah. Because. Uh, that's like since it's a big deal that she's about to get her 10th kill you know they're talking about like oh well like why don't we have you do it over at the temple of venus Mm -hmm. and because they tried to do like the Colosseum, they wanted to do it like during the vatican for like but the pope doesn't approve of the hunt (laughs) like (laughs) and and they were like okay well we're gonna do like they set up a sponsorship deal to, for this kill, which is probably the funniest part of the movie. It's like, yeah, it's like, oh, it's like Ming T, right? It's like, okay, so you're yeah. gonna kill him and say, like, oh, they didn't, I guess he didn't drink his Ming T. Yeah, they were like, they wanted to turn this whole thing into like a big commercial type of thing. And, uh-huh. and then, you know, she does eventually track him down and she's just kind of scoping him out at first and she's trying to like, pretend to be like this real ditzy American mm-hmm. type of girl. And when they're at the, at this restaurant, which is like a, like this outdoor restaurant where they just have like these, like, like cube t- tables, <laughs> like these, <Yeah. laughs> they sit on like sphere or no, it's just cubes, but yeah, it's just shapes. Mm-hmm. And it's like on a roof. But one of the rules in Italy is you can't kill people at restaurants Oh, that that's that's another funny line because yeah. <laughs> that's because that's it. The thing you see a lot in this movie is that you'll see like people getting into like random gunfights, and it's because mm-hmm. it's because it's the hunt, and and so many people are like turned off by it. Like nobody like gives it any reaction anymore mm-hmm. for the most part, and it because they one of the rules in the hunt is that you can only kill. People your victim or the hunter you cannot kill anyone else otherwise you will go to jail Mm -hmm. for it and because they even you know because they even tell the uh, marcello it's like well you got to be real careful because you know you kill her and she's not the hunter you're going to go to jail for the you know for murder and the another comical moment is where this guy is going after this girl and she's like please help me and and he she ends up getting killed and he he does it right in front of a cop and the cop's like is that your car over there you're getting a ticket for that buddy like, <laughs> yeah like, you you parked illegally <laughs> but uh but yeah the, the going back to where you said like the the people at the restaurant's like hey there's no shooting in here none of that is allowed and like and like the hunter and the victim or like they're just walking out it's like they don't let you shoot anywhere anymore. Like you can't shoot in a church. You can't shoot out. The st- <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's, it's like, it's not like in America. Cause I guess in America you can kill anyone anywhere you want. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, one thing I liked about the scene, the restaurant scene and a few others is that the soundtrack that goes with it is being played actually in the scene. Cause in the background, there's just two saxophone players on like two cubes, just like, jamming out and it's it's literally the music in the scene and there's like a few scenes like that where like someone's playing piano and that's the score i I thought that was a good little bit of fun yeah yeah Yeah, i i i enjoyed the the music is pretty interesting yeah Yeah, it's interesting but it's it stands out yeah it's it's good in a good way and so um but that's kind of like the whole thing is like she tries to like get to know him better and like get on his good side and like kind of lead him into this trap because you know, like the whole, you know, she could easily just shoot this man like on the spot mm-hmm. and she'd be, she would already, you know, and then the game would be over, but you know, they're trying to get this big thing to happen, you know, so they're trying to entice him over to go to going to this, you know, temple and like, you know, at this, at the agreed upon time. And the, she has like this really honestly i got one dumb lie it's like oh i'm part of like this um sexually repressed group of women yeah. and i'm like i'm doing this article on sex with men and throughout europe or whatever mm-hmm. yeah and, and he isn't really falling for it but he he can't kill her because he can't confirm that she's the hunter 
Um, so that's where this movie falls into like a cat and mouse kind of deal, right? Where it's like, because she won't actually kill him except for at one specific spot that they're filming for the commercial. So it's about her trying to get him into the position to do that. And what I like about later in the movie is Marcel's like, well, you know what? I'll play at her game and I'll get a sponsorship and we will get, I'll get back at her that way. Yeah. That, that, that's a funny scene later in the movie, mm-hmm. but uh, there's some really, uh, like, so, so the majority of the movie is them just like their budding relationship between yes, them. Yeah. And I, to be honest, like I didn't even like, like I, I, I didn't really care for some of the scenes like in between, like it, it was probably the weakest part of the movie for me is like them, like getting to know each other. I, um, you, you know, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I, I think what I love about this movie and like, you know, what I've talked about so far is the world building, the comedic elements, the romance elements. I don't, I don't know. I really wasn't feeling their romance, I guess. No. And uh, which is funny because and they did end up dating yes, in real yeah. life, but <laughs> but uh, I and that's I, that's just to say like this is like my one negative aspect of the movie that I didn't care for as a whole. I like the movie. It, it was oh, a yeah, good it's a great movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, but this is probably the part that I just didn't work for me. Um, but yeah, it's because they they have they show like this one scene where I guess he's like. A pastor like this weird like cult <laughs> yeah the sun the sun or uh sunset sunset setters, sun yeah. yeah and they go and like they go through like this big ceremony type of thing and he takes her back to i guess like his old apartment which he used to share with his because i guess him and his wife are on good terms and then his ex-wife yeah i guess i mean enough for his ex-wife to spend all of his winnings where he's like where's my winnings and she's like well i spent it all of course yeah and you know he's he's trying to avoid his mistress like throughout this whole time too and Mm -hmm. but yeah i mean like the real meat of the movie that i like the most is them like just kind of figuring out like how to one-up each other like like you Mm -hmm. said like later in the movie like he kind of like he's like formulating his own plan where like they're like okay we're gonna bring in this giant crocodile into this pool type of thing you're gonna come in and you're gonna sit in this chair and watch what happens and it's like this like beach chair that like launches people into the air yeah it's so silly because i guess he's like a gadget guy because like that's kind of a reoccurring thing because he makes the first his first kill die from blown up boots that click together and they blow up and he and he has that doll thing for a little bit that like crawls on the ground that's like a mechanical thing the giant uh, eye in the window like he's like kind of a weird gadget dude well yeah it's boy i really i I don't know that seems so like weird yeah yeah. funny where it was like because it was like this weird like robot dog but it didn't have any hair fur on it it just had like it looked like it was made of like from like a, an erector set yeah and and it had like these weird like doll eyes like glued onto it and he's like he's like ah oh, there there and like he's like you're the only one who <laughs> understands me like he's so cute like he, he likes you a lot like, yeah no yeah exactly. i thought that was so odd um the Sunsetters cult stuff was fun. I, I I really like the setup though for how they get him there because you know they have a budding romance and they they get together and it, it's in a tent, but somehow Ursula Andress makes it so a crane picks up the room and then it travel and brings the room to exactly where they need to kill him at. Yeah, and they 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 drive him all the way to the temple which that's what that, that's what they were going to do in the first place and mm-hmm. they uh you know he has his own gun that she finds and you know mm-hmm. it's going to be like this big uh poetic moment like you know she's gonna shoot him with a gun and mm-hmm. and you know he's like hey you know because when, when it's finally revealed it was you know he he's like he's sitting there and like all the cameras are pointed at him he's just he's kind of having fun with it it's like oh yeah this is great you know like he you know like you know he's about to be killed you know he's just like yeah, yeah. Oh, this is so fun 
and that what makes it so like i think ursula is like huh like why are you laughing and he's like yeah this is so creative it's such a good time well yeah i mean because she's like you know like you said she's she's fallen in love with this man mm-hmm. and she really at this point like doesn't want to kill him like you know yeah. she's she's very conflicted you know he's just yeah he's got a big smile on his face like no just just go ahead do it like it's fine like it's mm-hmm. it's okay and yeah and she shoots him and then well they have like this big like dance number beforehand with like the, yes <laughs> with the with all the ming t dancers and you know after she shoots him she says like the 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 uh slogan i, I can't remember but it was yeah like you said yeah. it was something like he like he would have been fine if he had a mean, his mean tea or something like that. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. yeah, brilliant. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she's kind of walking away, but it turns out there's a big twist. Those were blank bullets. Yeah. Oh my God. And they, they, they realize it by, they go back to the dead body, the crew that was filming, like, where's the body? Yeah. I, I thought that was a pretty creative, like, you know, I, I did too. I, yeah. I, I was like, I wasn't expecting that. And yeah. Cause I didn't know how it was going to end. I genuinely didn't know who was going to end up winning this war between them. Yeah. And that takes a turn where you're thinking like, Oh man, like he's dead. And then, but it turns out, Nope, he's actually alive. Those are blanks in the bullets. And then, mm-hmm. uh, then he, uh, he shoots her. And with that in front of all the cameras and like all the cameras wrote to her was like, here, say the line. And, and then he says his own, like, he's like, yeah, he says, she, Oh, she didn't take a double dose. Yeah. Like, she made take... a mistake. She didn't take a double dose. of your tea. <laughs> yeah. and, and they're like, yeah, it's brilliant. And like, mm-hmm. But the twist is, is she isn't dead. <laughs> um and but like then it ends in this really bizarre fight at the end like a gunfight with both of them in it well because like the we didn't I, there's a lot of other stuff yeah. that happens between them so i mean like they go into like this whole big discussion this is much earlier in the movie earlier mm-hmm. like where you know she just goes into this whole like well you're just not being honest with yourself you know she's mm-hmm. like you know why are you, why are you with this one woman and you don't really love her and he's like, oh, you want honesty? And then, you know, he calls his mistress. Her name is Olga. He's like, he calls Olga on the phone and was just like, hey, like, I got an old a long time ago. Uh, I'm not going to marry you. Sorry. And mm-hmm. she's like, I'm going to murder you. I'm going to kill you. And <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, you know, like after they've had this little back and forth with each other, like who's alive, you know, Olga shows up at the end <laughs> with a gun. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> And just such a ridiculous gun scene where it's like yeah, nobody gets hit. They're firing so many bullets, or, but everyone's dodging them. It's fine, like because Olga, like she's like doing these like poses with like the gun. Yeah, like, she's like weakly holding the gun. <laughs> it's like, uh huh. And then like, yeah, and she does like the whole thing, <laughs> mm-hmm. and like first marcel is like give me the gun you're doing it wrong and then she's like no you give me the gun you're doing it wrong mm-hmm. and then he tries to throw a brick and he's like it's like oh did you get hit he's like no i dislocated my shoulder <laughs> that that got a good laugh out of me <laughs> <laughs> and I that was funny. and there's another scene too we didn't mention where like uh ursula she's like she tries to make uh, marcelo jealous by hooking up with another guy or like mm-hmm. you know trying make him jealous and then that guy shows up and then olga's like hey who are you and then but then like marcelo's like ex-wife also shows up with a gun and now she's shooting bullets yeah it's just like the most insane gunfight you could think of yeah and that goes on for a little bit which but it's like it's like a little funny scene and Mm -hmm. they uh they eventually get on to uh an airplane but turns out to be like a wedding chapel plane. yeah which is so weird it's like he's like oh man you knew this was going to be a marriage plane so yeah i guess every aisle has to get married so they get to their aisle and he it's like he's oh, i guess i have to get married or i die yeah, yeah he's like fine i'll get married i guess and it's just like yeah and i i like that he's like you know he's like oh why did you have to ruin the romance kind of deal <laughs> yeah and uh 
the movie ends with the uh, the pilot like pointing a gun at them. <laughs> yeah, it's like a still image too. It's not moving. Yeah, um, yeah. No, it it's a lot of fun. I think it's a movie that really gets by on just like style and weirdness. Like, despite maybe a few plot flaws, I think overall it's just like a movie I admire and just had a really yeah. good time watching. Yeah, it, visually, it's it's a really impressive movie. You know, I like watching it. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, I didn't really connect with the story as well as probably they wanted me to. I mean, like I said, I thought the the character building was a little weak um, with that stuff. But as a whole, it's a pretty good time. And mm-hmm. you know, like I said, it's 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 a different enough movie that I would I would give it a recommend. You know, I had I had a lot of yeah. fun watching it and the premise is really neat. You know, it, it's a premise that we've seen now because, you know, now the, the whole like per yeah, hunger games. Hunger games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, deal. yeah. So it's, it's not anything you've hadn't seen before, but it's different enough, like a different enough take where it's like a game show where it's just like, Oh yeah, mm-hmm. this is kind of, you know, it's like a little, it's a different concept, but um, cause it's, you know, there, there's other rules. Like there's other parts too, where, he finds out they tell him that he's a victim and he's walking around and they're like, does he even know? Like, can, can we call to find out if he knows he's a victim or not? And they're like, Oh yeah, we told him. <laughs> yeah. No. Cause he just, he doesn't care at a certain point. He's just like walking out in the open. It's like, I'm going to get killed anyway. So what's the point? It's like, yeah, ex- exactly. Um, no, it's like fun touches like that. Yeah. It's like these weird, like fun little black comedy moments where mm. it's like, I wasn't expecting a comedic tone to this movie but this movie is pretty funny like you just you Mm -hmm. just wouldn't you just you wouldn't expect like a movie uh like this to be as funny as it would be you know i was expecting like some type of like italian exploitation type of movie honestly but it's like it's kind of like hey what if the purge was like an avant-garde like italian (laughs) new wave movie (laughs) yeah no that's a great way to put it I think that's a good way to put it and be like, yeah, this is why you should check this one out. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like I said, you know, it's it's different enough to where I I would I was not expecting a lot of this stuff. So I give it a pretty, pretty decently high recommend. Yep. Same here. Same here. <laughs> yeah. Had a good time with it. But that's going to do it for this week, Nathan, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, Nathan, what are we going to be doing next week? All right, so Ryan, we're back at it again with Bonmara, and we are moving on to a new Bond with GoldenEye, which GoldenEye is not streaming anywhere, but we will be talking about it next Tuesday. But Ryan, what are we talking about on Thursday? Well, yeah, just watch the, uh, just play the video game, you know, uh, that home, eh. that's, it's the same thing. Gonna get past the first mission. Yeah, it's something only 30-year-olds like, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> 30 year olds <laughs> but uh anyway uh for the second movie we are continuing the gamma series with the second gamma movie which is gamma versus barugon uh which i believe the uh english version is on uh youtube so that one is streaming on prime and it's on youtube for free as well and just as a point of uh, distinction, it is Barugon, not Baragon. So, not uh, <laughs> not from the Frankenstein movies that we all love and know. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh, really do appreciate it. If you like this podcast, send an email over to Drive and Double Feature Podcast at gmail don't forget to X us over at X at DIDF pod. And once again, check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash driving double feature podcast. But until next time, until next time. Mm-hmm.